Hello. A couple of little things to talk about on here. Um, I've had a go at threading on my own on this thing here. Um, what I wanted to do was turn a six TPI thread on there that would match what the nose of the spindle is, so I could mount the chuck on it and a hopefully some someday eventually I could turn this into I don't know a rotary table perhaps for the um, for the drill press or something to do with indexing somewhere I don't know but I mean the idea was just to get something for a, a chuck to match that thread so I could mount that on but and I don't know why uh, I've set this up from what I can tell from the information on the plate there and all any other information I can find and I want a 6 TPI and I'm getting 12 TPI and I really really don't know what the problem is uh, I'm running in back gear that shouldn't make any difference because it's about the relationship of the spindle to the gears and not anything to do with that on there. Uh, I've verified that I have got a 4 TPI lead screw with my thread gauges here so I know that's right. This chart says that I should be running a 40 on the um, tumbler spindle Arbor and a 60 on the lead screw, which I've got as an idle. I've got an 80 tooth. Now, I always understood that it didn't matter what you put on, and if you can see down there, it doesn't matter what you put on as an idle in here, that um, it wouldn't make any difference. It's just to make the gap up. So, I've got 40 60 as it says, an 80 on there. I've got a 4 TPI lead screw, but I'm getting 12 TPI on there, and I really don't know why. Is it something to do with that 80? Because, yeah, <laughs> I can't see that that 80 idle gear is having any effect. Oh well, there's obviously something silly I'm missing. It. Well, hey ho, I'll, I will get to the bottom of it. So, other little bits. Um, I've got some bits coming up. When I got my uh, grooving and parting tool, that is somewhere buried in there. Um, it only ever came with one bit, so that's why in some recent videos I've been hacksawing stuff. I mean, I would have had to have hacks, hacksawed them anyway, because this thing just isn't big enough to go that deep. But. So I've got some of these. These are cheapies from China. I think I paid something like five or for ten of them. So that's come in. Made this in a recent video. Love it. It's great. But before I started making that, as soon as I realised I need the uh, 13th, 16th um, die holder, I went on eBay and had a look through and see what was there. And this one was on there and I put a minimum bid on it and then forgot about it and then I won it. It's only three quid, so it's nothing to worry about. But yeah, so I've got that turn up now. So I've now got two 13, 16th die holders. But this one has got this little thing on the back, which I should imagine fits on a a bar to hold it in the tail stock so that'll be handy and another little thing is um, these gears now this is to get the lead screw running what could I say properly better as it should be so 
down here how can you see very well let's move that a little bit for you right so down here I've shown you there is a there is a void in there and I'm going to get that 50 tooth gear in there and run a 20 tooth gear on that now what I originally thought of doing was I've got two of these 50 tooths from the change gear set I got and I was going to use one of these because I originally thought that this is inch on the lead screw here and I thought it would be inch in there but it's not it's inch and an eighth so prior to doing anything and stripping anything out I'd made this little um, sleeve up that I was going to bore this out and put that on and that was going to be it but then I took it apart and found out it was going to be inch and an eighth so not thinking too much I made up another sleeve that I could fit noisy pipe that I could fit the uh, 50 tooth onto but then I was just I would end up taking all of this center box out and the I don't know what you'd call that is a web or whatever it is in there this recess part that really isn't very thick at all so decided not to go down that route. So those two little bits I made, they'll come in useful for something else. So I found these gears online from a company, can't remember the name at the moment, but they've these are module 1.5 as well, so they'll match up with the change gears I got. And the nice thing is they're not very expensive. I think the 20 tooth one was three or four pounds for that one and that that's including chipping and this one was about 10 pounds including chipping so not a bad price and knowing that I can get these I can complete the change gear set I want on the 1.5 module so I've got um, all the higher gears, I just want some of the lower ones, like I need a 45, uh, 35, 30, yeah I've got a 20, because I did actually, tell a lie, when I put these, I ordered the 25 as well, and I've actually um, bored that one out and broached it, so that, that came from the same set, it did have that piece on there, but I just turned it off. And they are, I'm saying they're actually a little bit thicker, which is better for what I want. So. so I've got the 25 on that. So anyway, what's going to happen here is that gear is going to go in there onto the lead screw. And then I'm going to have the 20 tooth on, under it on there and then there's going to be a little shaft coming from the 20 tooth onto uh, a bevel gear so then that will bring 90 degrees for the handle to come out and it will probably be hmm, somewhere in this little area here I think I'm going to have to move these switches but it will some, be somewhere in this area here so the handle for the lead screw is going to be there which I think it was probably somewhere there in in the original setup of the machine. I'm absolutely convinced that's what that is all about now. So that's the little setup I'm going to do with that. And this reduction, what I've got is a four TPI lead screw. So for every turn on the screw, obviously, that's a quarter of an inch, 250 thou. With a 50 and a 20 on there, that's going to bring every turn I do on the handle will be 100 thou. So I'm going to have a lot better control over the feed. 
but I've got to board these out. That's got to be bored out to inch and an eighth. Um, I think the rod for this is going to be 12 mil, so that's got to be bored out. So there's a little job I'm going to have to do. And I think that's going to be the next thing I do is bore that out. After I figure out what this thread is, or what's up with this thread, and why it's doing what it's doing. I cannot for the life of me see what I've done to get it to go wrong. But I'll keep keep looking at it and I'll come back and let you know what big mistake I made. <laughs> if any, I don't know. I'll get back to you soon. I figured it out at last what the problem was. I was cutting a double thread of it. Plenty of you realise that. Because I was disengaging the lead screw, there are two points on the lead screw, well two that I found. So you can see what I done was just put a, put a marker in one of the threads and wound it through. And there are two separate threads there. So that's the silly amateur rookie idiot mistake I was making so now I've got to figure out how to do this I don't have a dial indicator I have had a little go at sort of running it see if I can pick up where the um, hand wheel on the lead screw is in position for when I engage the half nuts but that doesn't always seem reliable from what I can see. So it might be a case of I've got to constantly leave the half, gut, half nuts engaged and um, use a reversing mechanism on the screw. If I wind it out, wind the, the cutter out, use the reverse to reverse the carriage back, wind the cross feed in, a bit of feed on with the top slide and cut it that way. I think that's the way I'm going to have to go. But I think that's I don't think that's going to work out for a 6 TPI thread. I think with that double cut on there now that's, that's pretty much ruined for that. But it no matter it's um it's steel I've got that wasn't really of any great importance, wasn't set aside for anything, it was just a rusty old iron bar. I think it was worth wasting it for learning what I've learned about it, so. There you go. Lessons learned. Oh well. Onwards and upwards.